Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 32. Today is August the 29th. We are moving into the fall season, and I hope that we're building up that stamina necessary to deal with the areas that come with fall. You know, fall is a season where, you know, I believe in seasons teaching us things and growth. And sometimes we got to learn to fall to get back up, you know. And so fall is my favorite time of year because you get to see the fruit of your labor all coming to the harvest, coming to the midpoint of the equinox and seeing life change in a dramatic way. You actually see it. I'm Dr. Shine, and I am here today to talk to you on a few areas of entrepreneurial business practice. The mission here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit is to provide you with those step-by-step instructions that can help you in situations that can become a part of your journey or mundane or you know, something that you might just have to deal with in the end. So today I want to talk about the five effective ways to deal with the masculine entrepreneur who is controlling to the female entrepreneur. So you have a masculine or a controlling energy I say masculine in this case because the situations that I've gone through when dealing with some of my contractors, some of my employees, you know, who just did not like sharing the spotlight with the female of the same character, of the same, you know, work ethic. Now... (laughs) I recently just dealt with something, and this is why I'm bringing it up, because I think it's it's important to talk about it, to get through it and heal from it and move on. So we're going to have entrepreneurs and contractors who want to size themselves up to who we are. Sometimes they're going to um, really, really be there for us, really work in unison to create a happy medium. They're going to give us the accolade we need as well as we give them the accolade. And shout out to my demolition uh, individual who worked so diligently and we got that project done so quick and it was easy. And now it looks completely beautiful. And if you join our Youngstown Community Center page, you will begin to see the uh, results of the demolition. So that was really important. It was a vital, it was a vital experience that was needed because all hands on deck worked together. We jumped in where we fit in. Nobody had expectations of who would do what. And it was just a great, beautiful experience. And then sometimes, just every now and again, it's not something that is on a continual basis, but it is an every now and again area in business as entrepreneurs where men are going to size women up. They're going to put them, try to put them in their place. That masculine energy, that outdated, mundane energy of control is very recognized in the field of contracting, in the field of, you know, a home improvement, in the field of uh, education, you know. And so here's what we have to do to cope with that. So the five ways to deal with the controlling individual who does not understand that succeeding comes in all genders. (laughs) And, you know, shout out to all those in the work relationships that's dealing with these type of individuals. You know, people who tell you, you know, things like, I'll be there in 
a scheduled time and they don't show up for hours and they don't text. You have to call them. They have excuses. Everything is so emergency driven during the time that you do call them. But if it was emergency driven, one of the things that if you really value all customers, if you really value all clientele, you're going to make it a point to get that information over to them because that is just the professional and ethical way to handle all individuals. No person should be the most important without allowing others to recognize who you are. Unless, of course, someone is, you know, this this contractor or this entrepreneur may be trying to dumb down someone because they're female or because they feel that they don't need to know what they're doing or they don't need. And then another thing is you never tell a client who is paying the, uh, the statement. You never say a true entrepreneur will always put the client in a position of power to understand the process. You know, telling the client, yes, I embrace you. You know, sure, you can take photos. Sure, I understand that this is what took place. And let me explain to you why. Not, I don't have to do this or whatever negative connotation that a person may have in that position. I wouldn't do it that way. Um, Why don't you do it this way? Or... Why are you doing it that way? Or this is not how it should be done. Or don't do that. Here's what you do. Uh, As an entrepreneur helping other businesses get balanced, one of the things I like to reiterate is that the power is in your hands. You do what it is you want. I don't care if you're a client that is a tenant of mine, that is in one of my housing units, that... I particularly, you know, try to support and I am told at this point that my services is not really needed right now because people like to grow on their own. I don't become, you know, um, affected by that. I give them space. Also, timing is of the essence and And rules and regulations are there to be honored. And when, you know, rules aren't honored, it makes it hard for everyone to effectively be in a place where everyone's growing. When they see one or two people just doing whatever they want to do just because. It's like driving on a freeway. And I use this example in a lot of my seminars. Driving on a freeway, doing whatever it is you want, There are three lanes. Please stay in your lane because what happens is if you don't, you're going to bump into someone else just following the rules. You know, now you're making someone who is responsible, accountable, reliable, a victim. And that's not how it should be. So the five things that we should worry about, um, recognize peer intention. You know, why are we dealing with someone who is constantly bringing us down? Because me personally, I've been in a position where I've had to get ghetto with people, especially some of my contracting men who sit back and tell me this, that, and how they're going to do it and why that, you know, I can see if that's part of the process. I can see that being part of the process of something I don't know, such as engineering, such as, um, you know, putting together, you know, these, you know, um, pieces of furniture that comes with all kinds of directions and ratchets and all this other stuff. And you're trying to help. Um, a, A real man is going to allow a real masculine energy entrepreneur or someone who knows exactly what they're doing, they're going to engage you in what they're teaching. They're not going to tell you, 
Uh, do you want to do this when you come up with a suggestion? Do you want to take this over? I mean, that sounds like a person of frustration, an individual who does not know how to teach. And I get that. A lot of times, you know, teachers have to be a teacher. <laughs> and if you're not a teacher, it's okay. If you lead by example, then don't put yourself in a teaching position because you're going to frustrate the individual trying to learn. They're not going to understand. They're going to feel overwhelmed. They're going to feel emotionally driven that, oh my God, I better do this perfect because I don't want to ask any questions that may rock the boat. That is something we never, ever, ever do. So finding the pure intentions of why individuals are doing things the way that they do them That very thing is going to make the experience a lot better. Now, a lot of these people don't behave this way all the time. So what we want to do is give them their, their um, space. Give them that opportunity to not as well dictate every step of the project. You know, some people love to come into even my program. They'll come in and I'll give them a set of guidelines and I'll say, okay, this is what I need you to do. I'll give this paperwork to them. And instead of them reading it, they'll skim through and then they'll flip they'll skim through and then they'll flip and then they'll sign. Well, you don't have any idea what was required of you because you have not read it. You have not asked any questions. You have not done any due diligence that's going to make you stand out and separate from an individual who has no idea even how to read. Just show me how to do it. So it's important and vital that an entrepreneur of a masculine, masculine or fem feminine at this point, you know, because narcissism comes in, in both genders, okay, all genders. I don't know if there's more than two, so I'm trying to be politically correct. However, what I've found is that, you know, there comes a time where we have to say, this is how it has to be. And so some of these people that are dictators or, you know, people who want to motivate through their way of doing things will come back with a, a different emotion than a person who's trying to really become professional, learn while being aggravated, learn by, by being overwhelmed, and then recognize and appreciate that the enthusiasm that's being given to someone by a person is its presentation. It's not what is said, it's how it's said. And every part of the project that we work on with individuals, everyone plays their role in it. You know, no one, you might as well do it by yourself if you're the only one that is doing certain jobs. I have an example for this situation. An individual comes into the Youngstown Community Center. They want to be a volunteer. Well, I give them the guidelines and the rules of what is expected by not only myself as a professional who has been trained under leadership, but also by my board of directors, by those who are already in existence, doing things within the area of community that are highly valued. Their communication is important. Their advice is taken. Their suggestions are valid. And so there are gatekeepers that are at the door that expect people to respond in a certain way. So when you have these individuals who come in, who chooses not to adhere to the adhesion of the 
program itself, then it makes it very difficult. There's no way that I would come into your home and your rule is to take off your shoes at the front door. And I just say, oh, I'm not going to take my shoes off because I don't want to get my socks dirty. You know, some things are just not as important to argue. And I've learned that. I had to learn that yesterday. And two incidents, you know, where the witches were out. The witches were out. They were riding the broomstick. They were up in the in the moon, you know, in the silhouette of the moon. I saw, you know, a lot of negative vibration and energy within individuals that really could have got me worked up. But I was already forewarned not to debate, not to argue at this time, because it's not going to be, you know, um, productive. So when I saw that, I backed away and I literally had to see the witches <laughs> move themselves from one era to another area. And it had nothing to do with me. I just watched them. I observed the negative vibration in individuals with professionalism create a space that was so distant from me and it didn't affect me. Um, why argue when the purpose for being there is to get the job done? You have something to say, I have something to say, and we can talk all day. But what is the purpose of talking about something and we're right there. Let's get the job done. It's late. Let's get it. Let's, let's get it on and pop it. And some people just can't deal with the direction, the directness of someone shutting them down because obviously they're tired, don't want to do it, want to have a reason to be pissed off. Maybe some people work under the, uh, the practice of aggression. Some people do. I've done it. I've taken out my frustration on the actual job itself and got it done in no time. Because guess what? Adrenaline. Adrenaline rushes. So asking these questions is number two. And the chances are if the person is really a control freak, they're not going to... Um, answer the question correctly. They're not going to answer the question with a reason for why they do it because they really don't know why they do it. They're just a robot that is conditioned to doing it this way. And because of that, all they know is the criticism. All they know is the expectation of what is expected. And all they know is the narcissistic tendency of controlling the situation to get the job done. Um, it's not, I don't care how you do it. Here are the rules. This is what, what's required. Please sign off on this agreement. And now I'm going to leave you to do what you do best. This is what you do. And that's growth. That's professionalism. That's ethical value in making your entrepreneur, um, their greatest version, putting them in the in the spotlight, helping them to shine and giving them the standard template. If you know what to do, then there's really nothing else that could be created other than the fact there's something new that needs to be added. And some people don't know how to handle that as well. Um, some entrepreneurs, they are expected to never, or clients as well, clients, entrepreneurs, male, female, young, old, okay, they like to have it a certain way and they never want to see change occur because change is uncomfortable. Change is something they're not trying to do. And with that, they give you all types of hell. So uh, it's very important to be aware of how you're going to put the change into effect. Voicing your opinion. If a person is very, very critical to everything you're doing, uh, if you're not taking it 
personal. And it's a continual process. It's something that every single thing you do is another mistake, another issue. That's when you pull them aside and you begin the conversation. You begin the narrative of what you feel. I feel overwhelmed. I feel this is too much. You know, now it's one thing when you're, when you are being reprimanded for something you did not do. Um, I've been in that position as well. I was working with a client and they wanted, obviously they weren't really in it for the whole duration. They wanted immediate gratification. And in business, you can't really do that because if you give them the whole blueprint at one time, they're never going to get it done anyway, because they don't have the stamina (laughs) <laughs> or the practice in order to keep this up. If they did, they wouldn't be coming to me and I wouldn't be putting down the process, okay? So as I'm giving them the process, it's amazing how they want it all in one session. So being opinionated and giving, being told that I'm something that I know clearly I am not, is where I have to voice my opinion and I have to say, yes, you may feel that way. However, this is how it is. And when I give you my reasons and my facts and my facts are backed up, not by, you know, they're very transparent, not backed out from a point or a position of control, a point or a position of, you know, uh, demanding or being super critical of another person, that's when it's valued the most. The opinion base is the most value point. Now, there may be times where your opinion can sometimes be withheld, okay? Um, But then there are times such as when a client or a contractor puts an entrepreneurial program or organization in harm's way by not knowing the rules, by not knowing the transparency of how things run and just jumping in and getting in where they fit in and putting the pieces of the puzzle together. I will allow that as an entrepreneur in a business that serves community. I will allow someone to come in and get their feet wet, get comfortable. The last thing you want is to feel like you're in the military um, because you want to volunteer to help someone (laughs) with housing or you want to help someone with clothing or you want to help someone with a food bag, okay? So I let you do what it is you do so I can see how close you are to understanding how it should be done. I give that leeway. But then there's a time where after I see where you are, Then I break down the specifics and I let you know that these are the requirements. These are what's needed. I need you to sign this agreement. These are the rules that we do when it's important to do whatever it is we're doing. So voicing that opinion is extremely important. Now, avoiding argument. Sometimes, now this is the hardest point. Because, of course, people are going to want to prove that they're right. And when they try to prove that they're right, they're going to keep going until they get their point across. Well, guess what? The client, the contractor, when they're in that mode, they're not caring whether you're right or wrong. They're only going to try to find the weakness in order to get what it is they want, the manipulative individual. So arguing the point is wasting time. It's preventing success from happening. It's stifling. The witches will at that point be on their broom distracting. It's kind of like getting into a a argument with a person and you know you know good and well that this didn't happen and they're telling you it did happen. So obviously somebody is delusional or somebody is distracting the process. And so remember, 
this, entrepreneurs. If someone is distracting your process, then someone is distracting their success as well. They're holding back what you could be doing by debating, arguing, avoiding responsibility, just to possibly throw you off your game, just to possibly tell you, let's file something that shouldn't be filed, that we know is not true, just so we can catch up. Let's throw a wrench in their perspective so they can lose confidence. So the entrepreneur, the business practitioner, the business developer comes in and invites the client or the contractor in and says, okay, we're going to do A, B, C, and D. Well, instead of the client or contractor choosing to do what they come to obviously need, they're going to do it their way. So what's happening is they're going to throw a wrench in the fire and say something like, oh, well, you're not as professional as you think you are. Well, now, if that was something that could be a problem for me and I could become emotional about it, now what happens is that distracts me and it puts me in a position where I feel a little bit depressed or possibly questioning myself or possibly whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing here on the negative end of what this person or a group of people are trying to get me to feel about myself is distracting me. So I'm not being as productive as I would be at any other time had this not have happened. Say something had been very successful. I would be more, you know, on the road to success to move on. But now I'm held back. But in my being held back, it's the seed that's planted in my mind that forces me to do it the way I choose to do it. So take, for instance, if I'm a weak-minded person, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to be analyzing myself, my professionalism, going back over what I already know. And what is that doing? Distracting me, my growth, my projection, the time that it would take me to get from A to B. I'm now stuck while this individual who planted the seed on purpose, who knew good and well there was no validation to it, now has an opportunity to catch up. <laughs> now has an opportunity to, to do more. Just hold off. Don't, don't move until I come back. And these are the mindsets of some individuals. So avoiding the argument is going to help out tremendously. And I know this is one of my hardest points because of the fact that I am a debater. I'm an argumentative person. I am, I'm going to get my fact across. And if I am that way, I have really stifled myself for a long period of time because these people already know. The client sitting in front of me already knows if I'm truly professional or not. <laughs> they know if they're, they're bluffing, but we don't know that. And so it's very vital that in every instance, we definitely take on the narrative to know who we are every time we sit down with a new energy. And number five, request mediation. If there's something that needs to be squashed out. We have not been able to um, sit down and recognize the intention of why it's being done, make the decision of if we're going to take it personal or if we're going to keep it professional. And if so, then we move on to if our questions haven't been asked or answered um, and we've been avoided, voice our opinion. And if that don't help, just don't argue. Figure it out. Put it on paper. Document, document, document. And if that doesn't work um, and it still doesn't fulfill the mission, request a mediation at that point, you know when it's time to let go. 
And that's what I wanted to say, entrepreneurs. I hope this has been a very helpful and lucrative podcast for you. And if you have found anything here helpful, please put it in the comment box below and also like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you can get these conversations on every time we download or upload to YouTube. Thank you so much on the podcast, um, students that are here. Uh, we do have 74 in the room. You're awesome. I thank you so much for being a part of the Chronicles of a Nonprofit um, podcast, and we will see you next time.